A few months ago, my doctor told me that he wanted me to get my monitors up off my desk and up to eye level. Well, that created a problem for me, but what I decided to do was to build a shelf, a monitor shelf on top of my existing oak desk. Well, my wife got the idea that we should take my great books of the Western world and stack them underneath these monitors until I got them up to a height that was comfortable for me to look at straight on. I mean, after all, I never read these books, and the only reason people buy them is to make other people think they're intelligent. So I finally made good use of my great books of the Western world. The next thing I needed to do was to design the basic design of what this shelf would look like. So I went to Google SketchUp and I sketched the exact dimensions of the top of my desk and the height that I wanted the uh, shelf to be. After doing the SketchUp, I went out in the shop and got to work. Now, I didn't want to build the shelf itself out of stock three-quarter inch lumber. I wanted it a little thicker simply because of the weight and I didn't want to end up with any sags eventually. So what I did was I milled some oak, raw oak lumber down to seven-eighths of an inch. I did the glue up. And after the glue up, I cut it to size and I cut the bow in the middle of it and I did this using a, a standard uh, woodworking uh, bow where I took a strip of wood, tied it at both ends and actually made a bow out of it and then I traced around the uh, edge of the bow to get my, my circle. And I cut this out with a jigsaw, did a lot of sanding on that edge until I got it nice and smooth. The second thing I had to do to it was I wanted to put a profile on the bottom. So I took a, uh, a cove bit and I put a cove profile on the very edge of the bottom of the shelf. I wanted to use the original wire access covers from my desk on the shelf. So the challenge was I needed to drill a hole that these covers would fit into. So I purchased this hole cutter from the local hardware store. I first cut the outside edge making it about the thickness in depth of the thickness of the cover edge. On my next pass I cut all the way through leaving me a lip on which to rest the cover. The last step in the process was to clean up this lip using a chisel. I decided to use a rail and style type support for my shelf. The panels were cut by taking a piece of Luan, cutting it to size and then laminating it with some red oak. I cut my style and tenon mortises by shimming my dado out to meet the width of the panels that I had laminated. To fasten my shelf to the support, I cut dados on the back side of the styles. These were cut before I cut the styles to width. I think the most challenging part of this entire project was matching the finish of my original desk. I went through many, many test panels during this process. To come up with the almost perfect match that I have on this desk, I went through a process whereby, first of all, I had to find a stain that was close to what I wanted, and that stain turned out to be Spanish oak, and it was the Red Czar Spanish oak, and this is an oil-based stain. However, when I put it on, it didn't look brown enough or red enough underneath it. So, my first step was I thought, well, I'm going to mix up a yellow dye. And that's what I did. I mixed up a yellow dye. Let me find a piece here. And this is what the yellow dye piece looked like. You can actually see some of the yellow dye that I put on before I put the stain on. Well, this was way, way, way too yellow. So then what I decided to do is I decided to take and mix a batch of red dye and slowly mix it into the yellow until I came up with the base that I wanted. What my process did is, on this color wheel, I moved the color from number one down to about a four or a five by adding red dye into my already mixed yellow. This dye mixture not only enhanced the grain, but to me it seemed that it also emulated the color of the original oak on my desk. 
I know that I would get a lot of pushback from the traditional woodworkers on the use of writ dye, but that's exactly what I did with this project. If you take writ dye and mix it in very hot water in a bottle and shake it until it's thoroughly dissolved, I see no reason why you can't use it. A uh, bottle of dye from a woodworking store is going to cost you about $10, 10 to $15. As you can see from this package, powdered writ dye cost about two dollars so that's what i used and i see no problem with it so what that did was that die gave my finish a background that would show me the depth that my desk has and actually when i ended up i had almost a perfect match it's this one i had almost a perfect match to the top of my desk which i'm pretty happy with again this is yellow and red dye mixed together i left the dye dry and then i turned around and i came back over the top again with some uh, uh, oil-based uh, stain spanish oak my final step in the process was to spray on several coats of clear satin water-based polyurethane. After allowing the finish to thoroughly dry, I assembled the shelf on my living room floor using just one small angle bracket on the ends to hold the shelf in place. There are a couple of things I would do differently if I had to do over again. I did not put a finish on the bottom side of the support underneath the shelf and uh, depending on the angle you can see that. Another thing I would do is I would clean my glue joints up a little bit better than I did. Hey, you, make it a great day and thanks for watching.